This first method of creating scars is the easiest method for sure. It creates an indented look. And all you need for this technique is some kind of makeup in like a red or a light pink or a purple. And you'll need rigid collodion. That's the thing that's actually going to make the scar look. And then at the end, you're going to probably want to use some kind of translucent powder. Now the first step that I always make is to use some kind of eyeshadow color. You can use any color you want, I'm using a darker color here to make it look more like a newer cut rather than a really old scar. Generally the redder or more purple colors are going to make it look more like a cut, whereas if you want to go for like a white or pinkish color, it's going to look more like an older scar. It doesn't have to be a single line, you can also make even a very intricate kind of scar. You can do whatever you want with this. Now it's time to add the Rigid Collodion. Now this is a very simple product to use. I don't recommend using it on your eyelids or directly next to your eyes. However, uh, any other part of your face it is fine to use. But basically all you're going to do is it usually comes in a nail polish like container and you're going to put it over that line that you made with your makeup. After applying the Rigid Collodion, you want to give it a minute or two to dry. Now the more layers you add of Rigid Collodion, the deeper the uh, indent in your skin will appear. So usually somewhere between 3 to 5 layers is going to be ideal. Typically I don't recommend adding more than like 5 or 6 layers because after a while it does start to uh, look a little peely. It starts to look less connected to your skin. You want to keep it to as few layers as you can to get the look that you're going for. The Rigid Collodion is going to have a little bit of a shine to it and you're going to want to take that away so that it looks more like your skin. <laughs> All you have to do is use some translucent powder. You can get this in just about any brand and just use a big fluffy brush and pat it over your new scar and that will take that shine away so that it looks a little bit more natural. At the end of the day, all you have to do is peel it off. It will come right off of your skin. Uh, it's possible that it'll have a little bit of a peeling off a band-aid effect, but it's not so bad. The second method for creating a scar on your face doesn't require any kind of specialized products or equipment. You can do this with just makeup. I recommend using cream makeup for this, however powder makeup, if that's what you have, can work just as well. You're going to want to make sure that you have at least three different shades of skin tone. One that is much lighter than your skin tone, one that is a little bit darker than your skin tone, and one that kind of matches your skin tone. So for the first step, you're going to take the makeup that you have that is lighter than your skin tone color and uh, basically draw in your scar. Make sure that it's thicker in the middle and then tapers off at the ends. Second, you're going to want to take your darker than skin color uh, makeup and basically make a thin line surrounding the lighter <laughs> color that you already put on your face. After that, you're going to want to take your skin tone color, which could be concealer or your regular foundation, that's perfectly fine and you're going to surround that line of the darker color that you made. So that now you've got three shades uh, kind of surrounding each other for the scar. So the next step is going to be just blending those lines together. Now you don't want to blend it so much that all of the colors completely merge into each other, but you want to kind of squiggle your brush around the edges of the line so that you get kind of a, a fuzzy edge to your scar, kind of like real scars are. They're usually not just <laughs> straight lines. They have a, a ragged edge. At the same time, you wanna make sure you blend out the very edge of your scar into your skin tone. So if you need to add a little bit more of your skin tone color to the, to the end, then you can do that.
Once you get your scar looking how you want it to look, then all you have to do is add translucent powder. Cream makeup tends to be shinier than skin tone, so this helps take that shine away and makes it look a little bit more natural on your face. So this is the pretty easy method that you can use if you only have normal makeup available. So the last method that I'm going to go over is using liquid latex to create your scars. I am going to, in this tutorial, make a kind of burn scar that you can follow if you want, but you can honestly use liquid latex for just about any kind of scar that you want. The supplies that you'll need for this method are some basic powder makeups um, and cream makeups. You'll also need liquid latex and, and some sponges. I also highly recommend having Vaseline because taking liquid latex off will hurt if you don't have uh, some kind of barrier between your skin and uh, the liquid latex. I'm also going to be using tissues to get texture with the liquid latex. It's not completely necessary depending on the type of scar that you're going for. And one more thing, before you get started with liquid latex, you want to make sure that you test it before putting this on your face because uh, latex is a very common allergy and a lot of people don't realize that they're allergic to latex. The first thing that you want to do is create the general shape of the scar that you want to create. Um, it can be small, it can be quite large, but this is just going to be a, a guideline so that you know where to put the latex. Next, what you're going to do is apply some Vaseline, a thin layer of Vaseline, to any area where you are going to put um, this liquid latex. Now it's time to get your liquid latex ready. Um, first, since I'm using tissue paper as a way to texture the scar that I'm making, I'm ripping it up into little pieces so that it will have like a ragged texture to it. First, you're going to apply the, a first layer of liquid latex to the entire area where you want your scar to be. Make sure to use a disposable sponge here because uh, it's going to ruin your sponge and you won't be able to uh, use it again later. You'll just have to throw it out. Next, you're going to use your pieces of tissue paper and uh, paste them, basically paste them to your scar area. You want to overlap them to, so that it creates a kind of texture. And then use liquid latex on top of the little pieces so that you can like paste them down and it'll look more like one piece, like one scar. You also want to make sure that you overlap the liquid latex over the edge of the uh, tissue pieces so that it can um, meld into your skin a little bit better. Keep going until you've layered tissue paper over the entire scar area and you are happy with the way that the texture looks. When you're finished, you want to make sure that you let the latex dry before you try to do anything else to it. Now the first thing that you want to do is apply a layer of cream makeup over the entirety of your scar area and over the edges. I used a darker color because I am making a kind of reddish purple burn scar. However, you can also use just your regular foundation or concealer as long as it's a cream based foundation or concealer. The reason that you need to use a cream makeup to start with is because powder makeup does not adhere well to latex, so you need the cream makeup base so that you can then use powder makeups on top of that to color it however you want to. After you are pretty happy with the way that your scar looks, you want to make sure that you blend the edges down with just your normal foundation so that it can uh, merge with the rest of your face, the rest of your makeup better. After that, you just want to add a little bit of uh, translucent powder to help it look, to help everything set and make it look nice and 
finished. When you're finished, you can just peel the liquid latex off of your face. And if you do not put Vaseline on, this is gonna be kind of painful, a little bit worse than peeling off a Band-Aid. But if you use Vaseline, then this is a very easy process. I will put links in the description for all of the products that I used in these tutorials. And I also, I have everything written out in a step-by-step -step format that you can follow on my, uh, my blog, so. I'll leave a link for that in the description below too.